It's our intention. Our intention is everything. Nothing happens on this planet without it. Not one single thing has ever been accomplished without intention. I was two people my whole life. I was in the living room entertaining people, being a monkey, you know, doing my thing for the company and, and trying to relieve my mother who was suffering. She had uh, rheumatoid arthritis and phlebitis and everything, everything under the sun that was nagging at her. And she was depressed. And I wanted her to be free. And I wanted her to realize that her life was worth something because she gave birth to someone who was worth something. And then I would go into my room and I would sit with a legal pad. <laughs> I was a little kid and I would sit there and I would try to figure out what it meant, what it was all about. Why are we here? What is this? And one day I read something from Buddha that said that all spirituality is about relieving suffering. And I suddenly realized that's what I'm doing in the other room. <laughs> and, and I'm aligned, you know, this, my purpose is aligned with this. So I felt incredibly lucky. I lose sight of that all the time. I get caught up in different concerns and ego concerns, but I'm so lucky to be a part of this community and to, to, to do something that is a value. And I, I really cherish that. And we are all one thing. It really is true. I woke up and I suddenly got it. I understood how thought was just an illusory thing and how thought is responsible for, if not all, most of the suffering we experience. And then I suddenly felt like I was looking at these thoughts from another perspective. And I wondered, who is it that's aware that I'm thinking? And suddenly I was thrown into this expansive, amazing feeling of freedom from myself, from my problems. I saw that I was bigger than what I do. I was bigger than my body. I was everything and everyone. I was no longer a fragment of the universe. I was the universe. And ever since that day, I've been trying to get back there. It comes and it goes. It's like riding a wave. Sometimes I'm on, sometimes I'm off, but at least I know where I wanna go. And that I wanna take as many people with me as I possibly can, because the feeling is amazing. You've made a decision to transcend and to leave darkness behind. <laughs> and it takes a champion to make that decision. I really want to speak to the fact that I've had some challenges in the last couple of years myself. Ultimately, I believe that suffering leads to salvation. And in fact, it's the only way that uh, we have to somehow accept and not deny, but feel our suffering and feel our losses. And then we make one of two decisions. We either decide to go through the gate uh, resentment, which leads to vengeance, which leads to self-harm, which leads to harm to others, or we go through the gate of forgiveness, which leads to grace. And uh, your being here is an indication that you've made that decision already. You've made the decision to walk through the gate of forgiveness to grace. We are so trapped, all of us, especially those who have suffered terrible trauma, uh, to think of that as a real thing. And there is a difference between real danger and imagined danger, and it's hard to turn that off. Meditation, for me, and for a lot of people, uh, has been a way to turn that off, you know? And or recognize that those thoughts are just thoughts, like clouds that cross the sky, 
they will pass on and uh, and to gently pull yourself back to a place of peace and just to stop the spiral of thought man we get up in the morning and, the, and we open our eyes and the show begins you know and it's a thriller for some people and, <laughs> and you can't help but get caught up in it and it's important a couple of times during the day to stop and go wait this is just as real as those thoughts i am bigger than these thoughts i am bigger than this body they talk about omnipresence in church and nobody really thinks about what that means what it means is every cell of your body is god everything is god everything is divine when you do good things when you tr decide to transcend the negativity and attempt to do something positive for you for your family you are the heart of god you are the eyes of god when you speak from that place you are God's voice. And when you make a loaf of bread in this place, in this kitchen, that is a Eucharist. You're blessing people with your work. You're serving the world with your work, with your effort. That is a Eucharist. That is the body of Christ. And that peace, that peace that we're after lies somewhere beyond personality beyond the perception of others, beyond invention and disguise, even beyond effort itself. You can join the game, fight the wars, play with form all you want, but to find real peace, you have to let the armor go. Your need for acceptance can make you invisible in this world. Don't let anything stand in the way of the light that shines through this form. Risk being seen in all of your glory. Painting is one of the ways I free myself from concern, a way to stop the world through total mental, spiritual, and physical involvement. But even with that comes a feeling of divine dissatisfaction because ultimately we're not the avatars we create. We're not the pictures on the film stock. We are the light that shines through. All else is just smoke and mirrors, distracting, but not truly compelling. I've often said that I wished people could realize all their dreams and wealth and fame and so that they could see that it's not where you're going to find your sense of completion. Like many of you, I was concerned about going out into the world and doing something bigger than myself until someone smarter than myself made me realize that there is nothing bigger than myself. This is the voice of the ego. <laughs> And if you listen to it, there will always be someone who is doing better than you. No matter what you gain, ego will not let you rest. It will tell you that you cannot stop until you've left an indelible mark on the earth, until you've achieved immortality. How tricky is this ego that it would tempt us with the promise of something we already possess? And don't worry if you miss your cue, because there's always doors opening. They keep opening. And when I say life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you, I really don't know if that's true. <laughs> I'm just making a conscious choice to perceive challenges as something beneficial so that I can deal with them in the most productive way. You'll come up with your own style. That's part of the fun. Oh, and uh, why not take a chance on faith as well? Take a chance on faith. Not religion, but faith. Not hope, but faith. I don't believe in hope. Hope is a beggar. Hope walks through the fire and faith leaps over it. Do you feel like you're separated from the rest of the world and what's going uh, on? No, not separated at all. In fact, it's the exact opposite. You know, I, uh, don't get me wrong, you know, Jim Carrey is a, a great character and I was lucky to get the part, but I don't think of that as me anymore. You don't, not, not at really. all. Not really, no. Uh, I used to be a guy who was experiencing the world and now I feel like the world and the universe experiencing a guy.